ان لفت هذا النشيد الى اطفال مدارس العراق وكلمات هذا النشيد الشاعر عبد الرزاق عبد الواحد والان نستمع الى هذا النشيد Well, you see, it's very difficult to speak about your own children because I love both of them very much. Uh, but really, they are a bit different. <laughs> Saad, he was much more active or sporty. Allah opposite was very sweet and quiet. He liked painting very much, chess playing very much when he was a small boy. I try to deal with both of them, you know, in their own way, of course. They enter the school, and the same thing happened because they were a little bit different, so each one took its own way. I think all Iraqis, they are now on the same line, on the same front, and they think the same way. because everyone will stand for his country. My children, they will join this line because it is their future, because it is their life and life of, his, of them generation. Everyone will stand for his country. And I think Saad and Dala will do the same, I hope. If you feel that you are doing the right thing, you feel always strong and powerful. I met President Saddam Hussein personally, and uh, I respect this man very much because, you know, he's a very strong personality. And 
I watch Iraq growing up throughout his presidency. I think our president, he tried to improve the life of Arab people, especially here. They want them to live the same way the Europeans do, to develop them culture, to develop uh, them education, everything. But they will be as equal as any European person. People here are not all, all the same level. So to bring them, it's need a little power, maybe, I would say. Agnes Bashir grew up in Stalin's Russia, which gives her a special insight into Saddam's Iraq. You know, there is sometimes moments in history. You know the story of French Revolution. You know the story of Russian Revolution. You know this. So there is a moment when the power is needed, you know, to organize country, maybe to give, you know, to give certain rules of uh, to live. And uh, President Saddam Hussein, I think he's more uh, close to his people than I watch anywhere else. Because this what what he meets with the people, he try to know his them needs uh, makes him a little bit different from the others. Do you think in 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 the Soviet Union in its time that Stalin had to also be a powerful leader in his day? You know what I was taught by history. It was one thing. What I am reading now, it is another thing. When you were a child, how did you think of Stalin? Cut. I like to go to the disco. I listen to mostly American music. I like it too much. When you go out with a girl, where do you go? I don't go out. I bring her here, I'm staying here. So you bring a girl here to the house? Yeah. <laughs> That's better to me, yeah. It is, huh? Yeah. But where, where are your, where is the uh, fikri and Agnes when you bring the girl? They're in the kitchen or in their, <laughs> in their uh, room. I don't know. They are living at alone, of course. In the West, they are thinking that we are uh, riding camels. A lot of people who listen to classic music, pop music, different people, like in West. Uh, I played piano about 10 years. I love piano very much. How would you feel if there was a war between the United States and the West against Iraq? What would you do? If there is a war, I, I'll defend my country because uh, it gave me everything when it was peace. And if I must uh, leave uh, the piano and pick up the gun, I will do it. Before August 2nd, did you used to think about Kuwait? Did you used to discuss Kuwait in school? We didn't talk about Kuwait, why? In school, do you ever have any students who think differently? 
who don't agree with what is happening. All agree. Everyone, hundred percent. My friends. Okay, we just talked about your friends. Yeah, my friends is agreed about that. Do all your friends agree that they will fight and go to war? Not only all my friends. I think that all people will do that. How old were you when you first remember learning about President Saddam Hussein? I was in fourth class, I think. Eight years, nine years. So you grew up with the president? Of course, of course. Would you die for President Hussein? Of course. I will do everything for him. I will defend him and defend my country. Ninety-five percent of Iraq's population is Muslim. Though Saddam Hussein is a Sunni, over half the Muslims belong to the Shiite sect. Shia leaders in Iraq have previously voiced their approval of Saddam Hussein and the Ba'ath Party. In Iraq, not only Muslims claim support for Saddam Hussein. بالمواطنة الصالحة ولهذا السبب فنراها في كل الكنائس فنرى في كل الكنائس مليئة أيام الأحد بالطلبات والصلوات والأدعية لأجل بلدنا العراق العزيز إننا في هذه الأيام خصوصا نصلي من أجل السلام من أجل الوفاق والتضامن والمحبة في كل العالم وخاصة في ربع هذا البلد إننا نحب العراق ونحب رئيسه حتى للأعداء كما قال سيد المسيح أحب أعداءكم إننا نحب حتى أعدائنا ونريد دائما أن يكون هم أيضا يعيش بالسلام والطمأنينة هم وأولادهم وعن رئيسه صدام حسين إننا نأمل أن لا يكون الحرب وإذا كان الحرب فسنقبله كما قبلنا العشر سنوات من الحرب مع العدو الإيراني أنا ناجي سلمان صالح نائب 
رئيس الطائفة اليهودية في العراق يوجد في العراق في الوقت الحاضر حوالي ألف يهودي منهم 600-650 نسمة يعيشون داخل بغداد والباقي موزعين على أنحاء القطر لقد كان عدد اليهود في العراق سنة 1948 حوالي 150 ألف يهودي وعندما قامت دولة إسرائيل فالحكومة العراقية ضايقت اليهود العراقيين فكافة الموظفين في الدولة أقالتهم من وظائفهم ومنعت الطلاب من الدخول إلى المدارس وفي سنة الخمسين أصدرت الحكومة قانون إسقاط الجنسية فلما اليهودي أصبح سنتين بدون عمل فانفتحت الهجرة هاجروا فمنهم من هاج... فأكثرهم هاجروا إلى خارج العراق أنا كنت أصر على البقاء في العراق رغم الظروف الصعبة التي لاقيتها لأني أحب العراق بالدرجة الأولى أعتبر نفسي عراقي وعلي حقوق للعراق حقوق علي ولها وعلي واجبات ولكن بالنسبة للديانة فأنا يهودي وكما يوجد مسيحي ومسلم يوجد يهود في العراق وهذه الديانة ليس لها علاقة بالسياسة الآن وحتى قبل عشر سنوات لا يوجد هنا أي تمييز عنصري لا ضد السامية ولا غير السامية في سنة 1981 عندما ضربت إسرائيل المفاعل النووي العراقي المخصص للأراضي السلمية لم نلاقي أي صعوبة ولا أي مضايقة لا من قبل الشعب ولا من قبل الحكومة العراقية لأن الحكومة العراقية في الحقيقة تفرق بين الديانة اليهودية وبين الصهيونية نحن نعتقد بأنه لما كانت إسرائيل وهي عدوة للدول العربية وتملك القنبلة الذرية فلا بد أن يكون للعراق أو حتى لغير العراق مثل هذا السلاح لمواجهة إسرائيل ولتكون فدرادع عن استعمال ذلك السلاح الخبيث وإذا حصل حرب بين إسرائيل والعراق فنحن الطائفة اليهودية في العراق سنكون مع العراق لأننا عراقيون وعايشون في العراق An Italian couple, Mauro and Bing. Each of the couple must enter the stage dancing with this clapping, okay? So, couple number two, June and Cheryl.
Welcome them. for the couple's winners and thank you stage is open for everybody now have a nice time thank you In Iraq, what is art depends on the eye of the beholder. The Victory Arch in downtown Baghdad was modeled on Saddam Hussein's forearms, which were cast and enlarged to form the base of the monument. In Basra, a series of 80 statues sculpted from photographs of Iraqi officers killed in the Iran-Iraq War point across the Shat al-Arab waterway towards Iran, the artistic merits of which are rarely discussed since Iraq's reconciliation with a former enemy. The Monument of the Martyrs, which dominates the Baghdad skyline, was designed by Ismail Fatah al-Turk, one of the leading sculptors and artists in Iraq. لكثير من الأمور وينطي صورة متقدمة للمستقبل صورة مضيئة للمستقبل من الناحية الاجتماعية ومن الناحية الجمالية وهو يهذب الرؤية عند الرؤية في المجتمع فما لازم مو مثل أوروبا يمكن الفنان ما ما يخص في ما يخص بالسياسة وما يخص بالبلد مالته تختلف عن الفنان هو كل سياسي أتصور مثل ما قال السيد الرئيس اثنينهم يصنعون الحياة بصورة أفضل للمجتمع. Let's say that there was an artist who opposed the government and he and he wanted to do art. That was offensive to the government, indirectly offensive. Could he do it? ما أنا ما أصور أنه واحد يعارض الدولة شنو السبب الدولة اللي هي خاصة الفنان هي أتل كل الظروف وكل الإمكانيات أن يعبر بحرية عن عمله الدولة أبدا ما قيدت الفنان أن يتجه تجاه معين أكو فنانين سوون أبسترا. أكو فنانين سوون تعبيرية، أكو فنانين عندهم رمزية، ولا فد يوم لمسنا أنه الدولة تقول سوي فلان شيء أو لا سوي فلان شيء. أنا أعتقد أنه ما مر بالفنان بالعراق ب بوضع جيد يعني خاصة ماديا مثل الوضع اللي حاليا يمر به الفنان. صور أحسن وضع يعني حتى يمكن بأوروبا الدولة ما تدعم الفنان مثل ما يدعم تدعم الدولة هنا الفنانين دعم كلش كبير وما تطلب من أن يغير أسلوبه أو اتجاهه بالفن يمكن لاحظت عدة اتجاهات فنية. The street portraits of the president. Do you consider them art? احنا ندري النقل عن الصور هو مو فن. فهذا يصير مثل البوستر يعني مثل الاعلان مثل الصور التوضيحيه هذه بها صناعه ومهاره بس كفن ما الصور هذا هو فن بس نقدر نقول بها صنعه اكثر. Let me ask you Personally, if there was a war between Iraq and the West, would you fight? Yes. yes. I, I must fight. طبعا راح قاتل قاتل يمكن أول الناس لعلمه كان تدربت ورحنا للجبهة معايشة 
واولادي اثنينهم متدربين وعاشوا حاليا واحد من اولادي بالحرس الجمهوري هو مستعد يقاتل باي لحظه اذا اضطريت انا اقاتل لازم اقاتل اذا ما قاتل راح اخسر وطني اذا خسرت وطني فني ما يعني شيء فاقاتل حتى احافظ على وطني اذا حافظت على وطني حافظت على فني Would you die for President Saddam Hussein? Yes, yes. I I love him. There is a thriving art community in Mosul, northern Iraq. At night, artists often gather to unwind in the company of local government and security officials. It never be the same because I believe in that and I think Jeff believe in that is nobody is a photocopy from the others, right? Right. So go ahead. Mosul artist Najib Yunus is the founder of Popular Portraiture, an art movement dedicated to the image of Saddam Hussein. His larger-than-life portrait of the president in 1980 set a style which has changed the face of art in Iraq ever since. I am Najib Yunus. During my professional work, which lasts for 50 years, طبعا لي الشرف ان اقول اني انا الذي اول بادئ في عمل هذه اللوحه الجباره للسيد الرئيس القائد وصارت مرجعا لهم وكقدوه الى تثبيت مكان الرئيس القائد ومكانته وتمجيده واعطائه حقه من الظهور في في هذا البلد وامام العالم. ولكن الشيء اللي تتميز بصورة السيد الرئيس وهو ما بدأت به أنا شخصيا وانتشر في العراق وهو قص الصورة بشكل تمثال وعزلها عن الباك جراوند تميزت هذا العمل الإعلامي الكبير التي الذي تقدمت به في هذه المناسبة طبعا وهذا العمل لم يكن في يوم من الايام الاعمال التقليديه التي سبق ان قدمت في ازمنه غابره او في لسلطات سابقه بل كان وحي خاص وبمناسبه خاصه وبثقه خاصه بالسيد الرئيس انا لا استطيع ان اقدر بالضبط عدد اللوحات التي صنعت للسيد الرئيس القائد ولكن في نظري لا تقل عن الاف او ربما تزيد عن ستة أو سبعة آلاف يمكن عشر عشرة آلاف لوحة صنعت في العراق لأنه لو أزور أي منطقة أو أي قرية صغيرة أرى على الأقل فيها ما لا يقل عن عشر لوحات كبيرة تماثل هذه اللوحة اللي رسمت التي رسمت من محبة الناس أذكر يوما ما التقيت بالسيد وزير الثقافة والإعلام الأستاذ لطيف صيف جاسم فعرضت عليه على أنه بعض الأعمال الكبيرة التي في طريق من الموصل إلى بغداد كانت مشوهة فاستغربت كيف يعرض تعرض لوحات السيد الرئيس بهذا الشكل 
والكل يحبوها يجب ان ترسم صوره بامكانيه زينه فعرضت الامر على السيد الوزير وحب يشكل لجنه اولا لانتقاء اللوحات الغير الجيده واللي هي ما تليق برئيس الدوله واستبدالها ولكن هذه اللجنه توقفت عند عند حد معين لان السيد الوزير عرض الامر على ما اذكر على السيد الرئيس القائد في لاخذ راي الرئيس حول امكانيه شيء او رفع هذه اللوحات واستبدالها بلوحات مهمه وجيده بشكل اخر فكان الجواب غريبا جدا وكان على حق ايضا بما معنى دعوا الناس ترسم كيف ما تشاء حتى ولو كانت خطا وهي من المحبه وانا اقبل الخطا وانا كفنان واستاذ فن قديم اعتبر انه الاعمال اللي قدمت عن صوره السيد الرئيس بهذا العدد الهائل في جميع انحاء العراق معظمها كان اعمال فنيه وبايادي كبار الفنانين الموجودين العراقيين ف عملت هذه الأعمال الخالدة والأعمال الفنية الجميلة للسيد الرئيس بمحبة ومن قلوب الناس لذلك لم يجبر أحد على عمل هذه اللوحات أو هذه التماثيل وأنا في اعتقادي أن هذه الأعمال ستدوم أبداً A theatrical evening in Baghdad. In Iraqi Kurdistan, Baghdad has always tried to maintain control of its Kurdish population, which has consistently rebelled against the central government during the 70-year history of the modern Iraqi state. Civil war broke out in 1974, and some Iraqi Kurds collaborated with Iran during the Iran-Iraq War. Since the end of the Allied war against Iraq, the Kurds launched a major insurrection against the government, briefly occupying most major cities in Iraqi Kurdistan. Allied governments refused to aid the Kurdish rebels, tacitly allowing Baghdad to reassert control. In the Kurdish city of Arbil, all traffic must come to a standstill by law when the flag of Iraq is lowered at sunset.
Dr. Hasro Shali is the Kurdish president of Salahadin University in our bill. Actually, the concept of autonomy in this region uh, is the only model in, in this part of the, the, the world. It uh, works very, to me, I think, it works very properly. Uh, the Kurds now in, in Iraq, in the Kurdistan of Iraq, had all their national rights. Uh, you don't feel you are uh, treated in, a, in any special way. There is uh, almost another local government, which is within the central government, taking care of all the Kurdish rights. Would you say that nowadays that the Kurds are integrated into Iraqi society? Not an integrated in, in some respects, but they are still having their own Kurdish rights in all respects. Do you see yourself first as an Iraqi or as a Kurd? How do you personally feel? It, it actually depends. When I'm abroad, when I'm asked where I'm from, I'm from Iraq, for example, then I'm Iraqi. But even if, if I'm asked if I'm a Kurd or an Arab, of course I say I'm a Kurd. And very proudly I'm saying I'm a Kurd. And there is no sort of fear to say so. As a Kurd, would you want some time in the future for there to be an independent Kurdistan? Well, you know, uh, if it is done within an arrangement in the whole area and accepted by all the nations, yes. But if it is uh, becoming a center for making troubles in the area, of course not. If there was a war with the United States and the West, would you fight? If I will fight in the war? Yes, against the, against the West. Yes, of course. I am proud of my country, Iraq. And if there is any war against my country, of course I will participate in it against the enemies of Iraq. That's a duty of every citizen, actually of every country, not only of Iraq. As an Iraqi, of course, I will fight to defend my country. Do you think that most of the Kurdish community would also fight? Well, yes, and they did in the previous war. <laughs> So if there was a war with the West, then the majority of the Kurdish community would fight against the West? Yes. I think it is rights of a country and the people of the country to defend themselves. What do you think of President Saddam Hussein? He's a great man. He's a great man, actually he's, doing all his best to develop this country, to give uh, all aspects of life inside Iraq, all what he could do for it. For the whole humanity, he's trying to bring peace and understanding and everyone become proud of himself, his nation, his country, and to see no differentiation between people all, all over the world. He's not just a routine leader, he's uh, doing more than that. Would you die for the president? If necessary, yes.
actually it is it is when you say president it is the principles the principles yes if you ask it's not it's not a personal thing Saddam Hussein as a person is different from as a president he is the his principles this is uh, what you are asking about the principles is On March the 16th, 1988, during the Iran-Iraq War, chemical bombs were dropped on the Kurdish town of Halabja. Approximately 5,000 civilians died as a result. The Iraqi government has consistently denied using chemical weapons on its own Kurdish population, contrary to Western documentation and eyewitness reports. Some survivors have been convinced of the Iraqi government's version of events. The following interview was conducted in the presence of several Ba'ath Party officials and secret police. Tell me about what you witnessed that day, March 16, 1988, in terms of bombs dropping, planes. Tell me exactly what, what you saw. <laughs> بوم جرانو جاری پیشو اما لروجی شانزی سی هشتا و هشتا کوا تیارات هاد لپیشا قصفی حالا جی کرد و دوائی وکا قصفی کرد انجا بازی تیاری تر هاد لحدود نوسو یعنی حدود ایران هاد قصفی کرد و کیمیاوی The West claims it was the Iraqi Air Force that used chemical weapons on Halabja. How do you explain that? روکن و اوانه لبروی کوا دجمنی اما بون لحولی روش و تایسا لبرو انا دعاشينو و بروپاغاندا دروسا كانو و دروكان تاري عراقي حتى اوشتانا ناكا شونكا تاري ايراني هات ومن خوم بشاي خوم ديم So you personally saw no Iraqi planes on that day? انت بعينك شفت ماكو طائرات عراقية اللي جت لا ما 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 جاي طائرات العراقية اللي هو جاي من الحدود من نوسو ايرانية النوسو ايرانية هو حدود بين العراق و ايران من جيل الحدود النوسو إيرانية هو جاي التيارات. and and you swear you swear as a Kurd that this is that this is true. وأو تيار. أنا أقول ويحلف وجاي من تيارات من المنطقة النوسو الإيرانية ويسقف حلبشة ومو بس مرة يعني يوم كامل والليل حتى جاي من الليل بالليل. After the bombing of Halabja, a new town was built nearby, officially named Saddam's Halabja. Are there any uh, people still living in old Halabja? صدام حسین خوابی پارزه، اما حالا جایی که تازه، حالا جایی که خوشه، پر لعاشتی و آسایش، کس عدالت کس نکات، کت فنانه با کسو. های حالا چه نحشی بر کلی لوب العربی. توان اما حیاتی اسامان زور خوشتره لحیاتی حالا جایی کن. چون که وقتی پیام وقتی جاری پیشو، حالا جایی کن. لبروي <تصفيق> وأمو <تصفيق> 
و هم سواسی خیالی سیاسی کن و سرکمان کس دام سید. How many people were killed in the chemical bombing of Halabsha? He can't answer. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Okay. Because he's not a politician or an official. Okay. He's okay. A normal man. That's okay. How does he feel? How does he feel about the Iranians now?
الحمزه ال 14 بدايه يسرع ويتقدم واصبح بالحكم بمركز In the West, they think Iraq is a closed society. Nothing could be far from the truth, uh, so far from the truth, uh, because Iraq is an open society. It's an outward-looking society. So, uh, in fact, the Iraqis travel a great deal and they love to travel. This contact with the world, as it were, is part of the dynamism or rather part of the energy that fuels the dynamism of, the, of, of this country. So uh, they, they're not just inward looking and uh, closing themselves off against the world, not at all. In fact, they want to be part of the world, which accounts for their probably very active art movement. Are there any con constraints from the government on writers or artists in Iraq today? Constraints? Yes. None whatsoever. If anything, uh, there is so much encouragement uh, that I don't think there is anything like it anywhere in the world. Uh, nobody ever tells you what to paint or how to paint. Nobody ever tells you what to write or how to write. The important thing is that you must excel in your work, whether it is in writing or and it will be published for you if it is writing, and it will be exhibited for you free. And if you sell, the money is all yours. Nobody will charge you anything for it. So there are so many uh, galleries run by the government free just for the artists. Uh, so uh, this is, again, another um, misconception I noticed uh, in, in the West, that the government is not, not at all. If anything, I find that the authorities are always pr proud of the fact that the dynamic movement in creative, uh, in creative work in this country has never been interfered with by the authority. Do you know the president personally? Yes, I have, I have met him on, you know, on official occasions. I was honored by his granting me uh, the, uh, the uh, prize for literature in 1988. He, he, he gave me the medallion, you know, as, as well as my colleagues. I mean, we were, we were six of us, actually, who were given uh, the literary prize you know, for 1988, and he attended the ceremony himself. There are so many portraits of President Saddam Hussein all over Baghdad and everywhere we've been in Iraq. Almost every street corner, every classroom, every shop. How would you explain this? Popularity of the president. He's very popular. Now there is a man who, who comes up from the soil of the country, who is part of the people, who speaks their language and yet who actually gives them a sense of pride and dignity and makes work possible, and makes everything, makes education free for everybody. I think it's, it's only natural that uh, they want, they, popular, they achieve their popularity that would make them want to hang his picture everywhere. And it's like this. In the West, this is considered a personality cult. This yes, is yeah. the way it's described in the West. A cult personality, yes. yes, yes. I know, oh, I know, yes. Uh, I was discussing this uh, the other day. You see, the word personality cult in Arabic is translated as the worship of the person. In, in the Arabs worship God. And God, the one and only. So there's no fear of worshiping a person. The, the rest is an expression of love.
So when you have somebody's picture, you're not worshipping him, you're actually expressing your affection your, 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 or, or, or your admiration of that person. Is it sincere love or does it come from the top down? It is certain, it doesn't come from the top down. No one, nobody compels you to put a picture in your room if, they, if you don't want to. It's, it's a sin. But, uh, well, uh, well uh, who, who knows what is in the heart of men? I mean, Shakespeare complained about it, didn't he? Everybody, all. But if there is so much love, surely a lot of it has to be uh, sincere and, uh, and uh, insistent upon the persons to express it this way. Jabra, do you love President Hussein? Look, this sort of language, uh, as I said, you see, I'm a man, I'm 70 years old, you see. Uh, I love a person, if I use the word love, uh, f for emotional reasons. Uh, it is, I mean, that's the way when one thinks of love. But a man who gives such dignity and such pride to the Arab world is a man I admire intensely. I think it's a, it's a thing that goes beyond love, if you see what I mean. You see, you love a person, you want to cuddle him, you want to huddle him, and so on. You want to identify yourself with him, and so on. Uh, President Saddam Hussein is not that sort. President Saddam Hussein is a man of, of, of great stature. I think of him as, as really as a hero. The way you think uh, uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a man in, in an epic, in Gilgamesh or, 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 or the Iliad, or something of the sort, you see. That is, that kind of, that is the kind of man he is. And he's, fortunately, he started when he young. He started uh, when he was just about 30. I was amazed, actually, when he merged suddenly. There was this young man, good-looking, tall, with beautiful carriage. He carried it himself with great uh, dignity, who could speak with such, so effectively and uh, with a language that was entirely his own, the kind of vocabulary he uses, and could actually build up the country bit by bit and so comprehensively. So finally, you see, you have really an admiration for the man that is something that goes beyond the idea of love in the sense that you probably think. Would you die for President Hussein? Look, uh, uh, would I die for uh, a man who has been responsible for the great uh, progress of this country? I would die for anyone who makes uh, possible the independence and the dignity of this nation, and he has made it possible. So uh, I think this country has been lucky to have a, a man like Saddam Hussein at this juncture in history. أبود عقيل فنان من العراق أعمل في صالون حلاقة فلسطين مريديان الدولي كذلك شاركت في كثير من الأعمال التلفزيونية والسينمائية ومهرجانات بابل وغير ذلك ومهرجانات كان 
الأخرى من خلال تعامل بالأزياء عملت كثير من عروض الأزياء وكان حد اللي حصلتها الأخرى حاولت أن أفتح مجال الموسيقى للشباب ففتحت أحد النوادي الليلية وهي الديسكو الليلي من خلال تعاملي مع الناس والشباب والشابات كان لي نجاح جدا احب الرقص بشكل فظيع آه كنت آه من طفولتي احاول دائما افكر ان يكون عندي مكان للرقص والان انا اتمتع بحياه جميله واتمنى دائما اكون بنفس الديسكو اكل واشرب وانام واستغنى عن الحياه الاخرى لان الموسيقى تشدني اعتبرها جزء من روحي خطوطه الليل بالعراق جميل جدا واحلى احلى حياه فيها يعني ما يحتاج كل وسائل الراحه متوفره وليس هنالك اي مشاكل ولا اي ضرر بالنسبه لاي شاب عراقي او اي مراه عراقيه الحياه امنه جدا بفضل القياده وبفضل السيد الرئيس صدام حسين So what do you think of President Saddam Hussein? Saddam Hussein is a great man. And not only he will come after him. He is a leader, a leader, a leader, a leader. He is a leader, 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 a leader. If there was a war between Iraq and the West, would you fight or would your friends fight? I fight for the last day of my life. 
وليس أنا وحدي وإنما عائلتي جميعا حتى الأطفال So you would put down your hair dryer and pick up a gun? Yes أستغني عن كل حياتي وأقاتل في سبيل العراق You don't have unique leaders every year or every decade. You have unique leaders perhaps uh, in every few centuries. We have right to call this area Iraq is living in the era of Saddam Hussein, as we call the era of Hammurabi, the era of uh, Nabuchodonosor, the era of, 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 of Harun Rashid. He represents the hope of a new Iraq. He represents the future of a new Iraq, of a proud Iraq, or of independent Iraq, of Iraq free of any damages or of any ill treatment. I am saying all this as a, as a historian, as a scholar, because I am not a politician. Uh, I, 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 I have nothing to do with, uh, uh, with, with any sort of, of politics, and I am a free thinker. Is there any opposition in Iraq against, uh, against the government? Well, I mean, uh, there is, uh, I mean, this is natural, but, but why should you oppose if, if everything is done or is, is what, on what the people want? I mean, I mean, I, you see, I am a normal Iraqi from, say, middle class, educated, and I told you now what, I mean, what we hoped for, what we always hoped for in Iraq is being executing, though it's been done by uh, this regime, by this government, by the president. I mean, why, what do you oppose? I mean... Well, what would happen if someone got up and just an ordinary uh, citizen got up and said, I, I don't like President Saddam? What would happen to him? I mean, I don't know, but why should he? I mean, why should he or she? Well, again, these are questions in the West. I mean, you and believe me, in the United States... And well, Britain, the West, I tell you, the West is different. I mean, our societies, we are building a new society. We are building a new way of thinking. Uh, we want to have not a uniform, but a healthy society. But does uh, it, doesn't a healthy society allow for some form of opposition? This will come. I mean, that's free thinking. That's part yes, of free yes, thinking or individual that, thinking. That will come in time. That will come. When? That will come when, when Iraq is... Uh, is resting, I mean, is rid of all these problems surrounding. There are eight, 18 million people in Iraq, almost, is that correct? Yes, almost, almost 18 million. 
Do all 18 million support the government? Can you see the demonstration? You, did you see the, the demonstration on Saturday? Uh, I the, did, but there weren't 18 million people there. From your heart, is there any opposition in those 18 million, or do all 18 million inhabitants support well, the I government? Well, I tell you what, I tell you what. I mean, we all, Christian and Muslim and otherwise, we, we, we all adore one God, isn't it? Do you think all the world, all over, they, I mean, are we, are we all reconciled with our God? I mean, there are, isn't it? Ordinary good thinking and ordinary people will live quietly and uh, who see the benefit of their country and the goodwill of their country. Not one man, woman, or child in 18 million? Perhaps there are some who everywhere who want to have illegitimate approaches or rights or wealth or power or certainly you have everywhere even if at one home if you are five brothers maybe one or two are not satisfied with what their parents will isn't it so there might be the one with ill thinking with with ill attitude but I am talking about normal, ordinary, goodwill uh, people. They, uh, I, I, I can't see any opposition, actually. The sound quality of the following conversation with an Iraqi citizen has been altered to protect his identity. They are so great. They are with the government, I mean, buff. Party memberships, so I cannot talk in front of them. What what would happen if you said something? To what if I say something? I'll go to jail. Nobody knows where I go and when and so it's disappeared. And nobody can ask where is that person at least. So why should I talk? I tell you a story. It happened for two or three years during the war. One man, he came to the, I mean, to the police or any side from the government side. He said, I killed my son. They asked him, why you killed your son? He, he told the government he escaped from military service. But in fact, it doesn't, it couldn't. There is some some misunderstanding between him and his son. That's why he killed him. So he changed the story to get the money from him. Now there is instructions. If you mention Mr. Saddam Hussein, you, you have to say, Hafidhu Allah. Hafidhu Allah it means God protect him. This two, three words should be, should be mentioned when Mr. Saddam Hussein mentioned 